Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the today's press conference here at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. I'm Anthony Rowley, a former president and current director of the club, and it's my pleasure to act as um, moderator today. Um, okay, well, we're going to be talking about uh, the Japan Hong Kong Democracy Alliance and what it stands for and what they are doing to help the uh, cause of the people in Hong Kong. Let me quickly introduce our speakers in the order that they'll be speaking. In, uh, to my, not to my immediate right, but in the centre, we have Mr. Sam Yip, who is a spokesperson of the uh, Japan Hong Kong Democracy, Democracy Hong Kong, sorry, Japan, Japan Hong Kong Democracy Association, and uh, he's a former district councillor in Hong Kong. And um, he will be followed to my immediate right by um, Machiko, Michael, sorry, Michael, Machiko, Michael. Michael Ichihara, who is a board member of the JHKDA um, and also a professor at the Graduate School of Public Policy at Hitotsubashi University. And finally, we have, um, last but not least, uh, to the extreme, my extreme right, um, Hidaki Wakabayashi-san, who is an advisor to the JHKDA and a board member uh, of the Japan NGO Center for International Cooperation. Okay, so that's the speakers. Um, as the notice says that, you know, following the, the Hong Kong government crackdown on the democracy movement after the 2019 extradition bill protests and the imposition of the national security law, many Hong Kong dissidents are either in prison, which includes one of my colleagues, former colleagues, um, or have fled from the city. The so-called Overseas Hong Kongers have formed various groups to continue their pro-democracy efforts, uh, but most of these are based in Europe or in the United States. Um, the Hong Kong Democracy uh, Alliance has been established to promote democracy and human rights in Hong Kong and across Asia from within Japan. Um, so they're here today to explain the group's mission, its goals and its strategies and how the organization will use art and creativity to express dissent, raise awareness, and inspire social change. So please join me in welcoming um, our guests. Um, let me remind you that if you have a cell phone, please switch it off or put it onto manner mode. So please join me in welcoming our guests. Thank you. Mr. Yip, please. Yeah. Thank you, Director Roddy. And good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests and our advisor, uh, Mr. Hideki and uh, Professor Michael, and members of the media and fellow advocacy, advocates of democracy uh, uh, who uh, are uh, viewing uh, our event online. And uh, I'm Mr. I'm Sam Yip uh, from uh, the Japan Hong Kong Democracy Alliance, and I was a former uh, district councillor in Hong Kong, uh, which uh, resigned uh, from my seat in 2021. And uh, after a few years, a few years, uh, I uh, decided to go to Japan and with my wife. And then, uh, overall, uh, we are all here and to uh, celebrate uh, a setup of a new alliance uh, of a group of Hong Kongers uh, who are uh, who are promoting democracy and to promote uh, the uh, value of freedom of speech and, uh, and based, based on Japan and spread to the global. And today, as we come together to launch this alliance, JCDA, Japan Hong Kong Democracy Alliance, we embark on a journey of resilience, unity, and commitment to democracy and human rights. The purpose of this gathering is not just to introduce this organization, but to catalyze a broader understanding of this challenge faced by our fellow global citizens and to appeal to our shared responsibility towards the value of freedom, democracy, and justice. We are an alliance of multiple Hong Kongers organizations based in Japan, but our mission extends beyond borders and resonates with individuals and communities who believe in the sanctity of demo democratic value and the uh, inalienable rights of every person to live freely without fear of repression or prosecution. Our journey begins here 
but it converged with the kindness path probably that echoes our pursuit for freedom and human dignity. In our commitment to this course, we have identified uh, several key, area, key areas to focus our efforts. Primarily, our role is one of advocacy, raising our voice against injustice, amplifying the stories that need to be told, and mobilizing public opinions to put pressure on entitles that can influence change. We, all, we also recognize the power of art and culture as an avenue for rising uh, awareness. It is uh, for this medium that we aim to connect with a broader audience, trans transcending language barriers and making the narratives of Hong Kong struggle more relatable. Lastly, we aim to foster international and regional cooperation for democracy movement. We believe that solidarity across border will strengthen our cause and bolster the fight for democracy. Our alliance is important not just for the Hong Kong community in Japan, but it's also a signal, a beacon of hope for the people of Hong Kong. The relevance of our cause extends beyond geographical block boundaries. It's a universal call to action for safeguarding democracy, a sentiment shared by individuals worldwide who value freedom. In addition to calling for solidarity on Hong Kong, we also extend our concern for the worrying situation in other Asian countries, such as Myanmar and Thailand. We believe that mutual solidarity is significant in advocating democracy. In our pursuit of these objectives, we maintain a vigilant watch on the evolving situation in Hong Kong. We strive to offer assistance where need to, needs are to keep the frame of concern alive among Hong Kongers and Japan citizens residing in Japan. We are committed to stand up against any, any legislation, measure, or action that infringe upon the right of the people of Hong Kong. An example of our advocacy and cultural endeavors is the Behind the Brand Paper BTBP campaign. This initiative, which comprises is a database detailing China's repression of Hong Kongers and instance of transnational repression provide valuable resources for researchers. To further the understanding of this repression, we developed a special art piece template that resembles a blank A4 paper at a glance. However, when held up to the night, the invisible link revealed the case from our database. This creates symbolized the silent struggle and her story of activists living under authoritarian regimes. And the uh, BTVP is already uh, inscribed in our basket, uh, distributing to uh, our various uh, media friends. And simultaneously, we reach out to the diaspora community of Hong Kong and other regions sharing similar struggles, fostering global solidarity. Notably, we initiate a statement direct at the G7 countries by Hong Kong's communities during the recent G7 summit. By doing so, we put the plight of Hong Kong in the spotlight, advocating for our cause at an international level. Recently, we marked an important event in our calendar, uh, the release of our declaration on July 1st, 2023, uh, which this declaration opposed the practice of the Hong Kong SKR government, which under the guise of the national security law and led on June 30, 2020, have started denying entry to foreign nationals, including Japanese citizens. In response to the Hong Kong government's ban on the song Glory to Hong Kong, which was composed and popular during the 2019 protests in Hong Kong, our alliance and Lady Liberty Hong Kong are also holding a competition for the first Hong Kong Freedom Art Award, collecting artworks in various forms to give Hong Kongers a platform to continue expressing their wills through creativities. Draconian law will not succeed in silencing dissidents. The need for Japan and its citizens to focus on Hong Kong's issue is of paramount importance. Japan has always maintained strong trade relations with Hong Kong, with the region standing as one of Japan's largest trading partners. 
whether we look at the figure of tourism or to export of agriculture, forestry, and fishes. Hong Kong's ranked very high, uh, uh, major in the top or in second place of uh, all over globally. However, the region is slowly becoming a right growth for China. A stark example is the recent ban imposed by the Hong Kong SAR government on seafood imports from the Fukushima prefectures aligned with China's specifications. The geopolitical implication of China's strongholds over Hong Kong are growing. The erosion of human rights and economic situation in Hong Kong's signal region, regional instability and China's growing ambition for regional influence. By taking a stance on Hong Kong's issues, Japan can facilitate cooperation with countries that have a significant number of citizens residing in Hong Kong, such as the Indo-Pacific ASEAN countries like the Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Malaysia, as well as India, the US, the Australia, and the UK. Such an approach would not only safeguard regional stability and respective national interests, but also strengthen the alliance between Japan and these countries. Turning our attention towards China's Universal Periodic Review UPR4 cycle, JHKDA, in cooperation with Lady Liberty Hong Kong, has made a joint submission on uh, 18 of July. And this submission highlights China's human rights violations, particularly those with a profound impact on Hong Kong and Japan. It covers critical issues such as the suppression of arts, artistic expression and performance, the censorship and removing arts work and books, the economic consequence and business disruption brought about by oppressive police policies, and the professional consequence and intimida intimidation suffered by those who dare to stand against these practice. In, the, in this light, we urge the Japanese government to raise questions about these human rights violations during the UPR session in the United Nations, highlighting the concern of Japanese citizens and issues related to Hong Kong, which has deep connection with Japan. The case of prominent Japanese figures, such as a uh, renowned photographer Michiko Kiseki and busker Mr. Wang, being denied entry into Hong Kong serve as the example of how Japanese citizens are directly affected by the national security law. Uh, with Dalai Mansion and other uh, Japanese journalists, uh, Mr. Ogawa uh, has, already, uh, has also been delighted uh, to enter Hong Kong in the 30th of June in this year. So this is also one of the cases that uh, I want to make a remark. Furthermore, I would like to bring attention to the alarming situation of the prosecution case involving a Hong Kong University student who studies in Japan. These students attended a Hong Kong related art exhibition, shared contents from the exhibition, and post pro democracy slogan related to Hong Kong while staying in Japan. As a result, she was subject to an unjust investigation under the Draconian National Security Law. And this case clearly illustrates the long arm of China's repression, reaching beyond its border, infringing on the rights and freedom of individuals of foreign territory, and violating principle of sovereignty. Indeed, an especially alarmed development uh, we must address today is the is the blatant act of transnational repression recently undertaken, undertaken by the Hong Kong government. On the 1st of July 2023, the government eased a bounty on eight democracy activists, signaling a terrifying escalation in the suppression of decent and free expression. The target individual, individuals are not just random faces in the crowd, they are eminent pro-democracy figures with significant influence in the ongoing struggle of Hong Kong for Hong Kong's freedom. The list includes the former lawyer, uh, lawmaker and uh, even Lo Bun Chong, Kat He Shifong, and Dennis Kwok Wing Han, uh, the veteran unionist Christopher Mung Siu Tat, and well as prominent activists uh, Elman Yun Gong Yi, Yun Gong Yi, Fi Nao Chok Tik, and Anna Kwok Fong Yi and Calvin Yang came for. This act of the bounty issuance 
is a disturbing affront to the principle of freedom of speech, political dissent, and human rights. It also signified a clear intent to cast a wider net of fear and intimidation not only among those directly involved in the pro-democracy movement, but also among their family member and associate network. Tragically, following the body announcement, five former members of the political party Democisto, to which Nathan no belonged, were arrested. Nathan's family members were also subject to questioning. Most recently, we received the report that Christopher Mon and Dennis Kwok's family were also taken, taken in for questioning two days ago, and the news broke today. These target of family members mark an unprecedented escalation in the government's tactics of fear and control. The circumstances we face are indeed grim, but let this not cause us to lose heart. Instead, let it strengthen uh, our resolve to resist, to speak out, and to stand in solidarity with our brother and sister who are encouraging standing up a formidable adversary. We must not let this act of transnational repression go unanswered. We must fight, not just for those being targeted, but for the principle they represent for freedom, democracy, and human dignity. Moreover, China's attempt to restrict freedom of expression goes beyond the targeting of individuals and is the extent to a systematic purge of free thought and artistic impression. Expression. A case in point is the behind of brand paper we just organized, uh, we just mentioned about. And this has uh, shown example, uh, a list of examples of China's uh, repression uh, on uh, Hong Kongers and the movement of the uh, democracy, uh, not only for Hong Kong, but also international. It's essential to recognize the critical role that art and culture play in resist resistance movement. This, they serve as a bridge to understanding complex issues, and it is our duty to continue organizing events and campaigns that shed light on these matters, making them more accessible and comprehensible to the Japanese community. For arts, we are able to tell the story of Hong Kong, the challenge faced by its people, and the broader implication of China's repressive regime. Given all these circumstances, it is more important that even for Japan, as a democratic nation, to show solidarity with Hong Kong and to advocate for the upholding of universal human rights. The Japanese government, together with its people, has a, response, has a responsibility to raise their voice, ask tough questions, and demand accountability. The fight for Hong Kong is not just about the city and its people. It's about safeguarding our shared democratic value and the right to freedom, justice, and self-determination. As the Alliance, we stand ready to continue monitoring the situation in Hong Kong, advocating for necessary legislation or measures to help alleviate this situation, and promoting Hong Kong's culture and artistic expression as a means of resistance. Today, also marked the 15th anniversary of the passing of a significant figure in Hong Kong's history, Bruce Lee. As we mark this important milestone in our journey, we remember the work of Hong Kong's beloved son. He said, to hell with circumstance, I create opportunities. In this spirit, we, the member of the Japan-Hong Kong Democracy Alliance, will not be defeated by our circumstances. We will persistently create opportunities to push for change, to amplify the voice of the oppressor, and to solve the seed of democracy. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can ensure that the voice of Hong Kong are being heard, and the life and the rights of its peoples are protected. Thank you for the attention and your support for the cause of freedom and democracy of Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Michael Chihara, professor at Hitotsubashi University, Japan. Um, I've been working in the field of democracy support um, in the Indo-Pacific region um, as a steering committee member um, of multiple platforms such as the World Movement for Democracy, the East Asia Democracy Forum, and the Japan Fact Check Center. 
And today, um, I'd like to talk as a board member of the Japan Hong Kong Democracy Alliance. Under the sovereignty of uh, sovereign state system, we all respect um, each other's sovereignty. Governments, including that of Japan, try to support democratic movements only when they are spontaneous movements. Then who are the ones who take action for spontaneous movements for democracy? It's people, it's the citizens. With up to two million people demonstrating in a place with a population of only seven million, the 2019 to 20 demonstrations in Hong Kong clearly showed that the people are calling for democracy. Following the enactment of the national security law, Hong Kong's advocates of freedom and liberty have been arrested, intimidated, and imprisoned. The advocates within Hong Kong have been silenced. The only way they can continue to make their voice heard is to speak out outside Hong Kong. That is why the courageous, dedicated, and public-spirited Hong Kongers have founded the Japan-Hong Kong Democracy Alliance. We all want to choose what to say, what to talk about, and what to read. These are basic things. These are fundamental things. And very universal values. As Amartya Sen argues, um, people have a natural longing for freedom. That's why we saw the people of Myanmar fighting to restore the government that the people had chosen. It is why people in Georgia took to the street to fight the law that intended to ban civil society organizations from operating with grants from abroad. Samuel Huntington, in his book, The Third Wave, shows that in the last two centuries, we have had waves of demonstration and democratization after reverse waves. This fact suggests that even though people may take democracy for granted and weaken it from time to time, they ultimately seek to achieve democratization. And as a study by Adam Schwosky, Democracy and Development, points out, those democracies that have a history of being democracies tend to stabilize. This means that despite some occasional bumps, democratization is the way that international order stabilizes in the long run. This is what makes the advocacy of the members of the Japan Hong Kong Democracy Alliance so important. What we the Japanese can do is to make sure that they can continue their work. Although they are outside Hong Kong now, they are the future of Hong Kong. They are the next generation of Hong Kong leaders. As a stabilizing force for the liberal international order, I hope that Japan, including its government and people, will support their activities. In order for advocates to maintain solidarity and empower each other, a region-wide support mechanism is crucial. The Milti Alliance, which brings together activists from various Asian regions, including Taiwan, Myanmar, Thailand, in addition to Hong Kong, is important for this purpose. In addition, the Sunnylands Initiative which aims at creating an Indo-Pacific regional mechanism to defend democracy is crucial. NGOs and scholars in the Sunny Islands Initiative's Democracy Advocates at Risk program can provide seamless support to advocates, democracy advocates at risk who are uncertain about when they can return to their countries by hosting them at their institutions. I appreciate the cooperation of like-minded people to support activists and activists from Hong Kong and beyond. It is only with the help of host societies that Hong Kong people can continue to make their voice heard and bring a better and more promising future.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Some, some telling points. Uh, okay, we'll come back to some, please. Hang on. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I am very pleased and honored to be able to attend this press conference of the uh, launch of the JHKD. I'm not used to the name of the, this acronym, but uh, I try to learn. And let me begin with my uh, self introduction. And during the Hong Kong Umbrella Movement in 2014, I was uh, director of Amnesty International Japan, and uh, uh, I was a director, and I, after experiencing private sectors, labor movement, diplomat in Washington, D.C., uh, politician house of uh, uh, counselor, Sang Ying Ying, and uh, also oh, think tanker in the CSIS, uh, Washington, D.C., and I realized that uh, democracy is most important, human rights most important value, more than any other issue. Of course, it's a uh, uh, private sector, but uh, uh, more important than uh, profit, uh, uh, revenue, or anything like this. So I frequently visited uh, Hong Kong to have a meeting with uh, Amnesty International Regional Office, uh, Amnesty International uh, HI uh, Hong Kong Office, and those uh, offices are closed, uh, already falsely closed. And I visited some demonstration in the 2014, tried to create a lot of uh, uh, monitoring to see police is using excessive force to crack down people on the site. So that kind of moment I never forget. In reality, that this situation should be uh, improved uh, in the future. And now with um, JANIC, JANIC is the Japan International uh, Center for International Cooperation. And to support uh, independent energy goals working on development, such as poverty, education, health. But I created last year a think tank called Think Lobby, which is focusing more democracy, fair society, human rights and civic space within the JANIC uh, organization. And because a fair and democratic society with the protection of human rights is a prerequisite for the sustainable development, instead of working on individual issues, a fair society is most important. It's kind of foundation for the uh, sustainable development. So we are doing two main projects. One is democracy in Asia, working with uh, several Asian countries, uh, working on democracy and human rights issues. Also, corporate social justice project. Even business is responsible for supporting fair society. And structural problems such as uh, social discrimination and fair election, as an example. So I myself is an advisor, a former chair of Asia Development Alliance, so-called ADA which consists of 30 networks, NGOs, in 20 different countries, in whole entire, entire Asia. So we are connected with uh, those NGOs in Asia already. And uh, I think solidarity is a key role for CSO to promote democracy across the borders by non-violence means. Unfortunately, there's a strong political tension between Japan and Chinese government, not us. So we communicate with uh, even Asian NGOs, even with the uh, NGOs in China. Obviously, those NGOs is influenced by the government, but we still we are communicating because once they learn the importance of democracy, human rights, dignity, they learn. Once they learn, they are the ones who decide which kind of political system is better than current uh, situation. So those kind of exchange is very important. That's our role, solidarity, work with other uh, NGOs in Asia. So, and uh, uh, they are human beings. They instantly, instinctively feel the importance of democracy. So I think this kind of movement, it will take a lot of time. This is kind of our role to communicate with those uh, civil society in entire Asia. And I think Japan is a good place, good position as a hub, democracy hub in Asia. I think very uh, 
democratic country. Of course, Japan has a many uh, human rights uh, issue, violence issue, but still, Japan is a good place. I think that's why China's organization also playing a, a role, or have a role, to promote uh, democracy. So I think it's, uh, uh, we are planning to hold a, a Hong Kong democracy event in September, along with uh, Asia ADM, Asia Democracy Network, which uh, headquarters is located in Bangkok. And also we are planning to hold a Tokyo Democracy Forum, TDF. We started in 2019 to invite all Asian uh, leaders working on democracy and human rights at uh, SDG Goal 16 and next March in 2014. So we've been already playing a kind of role to support uh, democracy in Asia, and we will continue to do this kind of uh, movement. Uh, it, it will take a time, most of time, but this is the role that we can do about this uh, situation, to change this situation. Thank, thank you very much. Well, thank you all very much for interesting. So let's open the floor to questions. Um, so, uh, working press first, any questions? Um, yes, please. Can you come to the microphone and introduce yourself? And if your question is addressed to any particular person, please. Nishimura, Hokkaido Shinto Press. Thank you very much for today. Uh, my question goes to Mr. Yip. And we are, I, I remember that we were very worried about the situation in Hong Kong uh, three or four years ago. It was very dangerous. And, and I'm very uh, worried about the people in Hong Kong is now living, how, how they are living now without the democracy. We, see, we saw the uh, shutdown of Apple, Apple Daily newspaper or other media uh, outlets. So how do you suppose the people in Hong Kong is living and are living? And some other questions, okay? Uh, okay, okay, well, just. And, <laughs> and uh, I think the extreme form of oppression of democracy is war. So we are seeing the demo uh, Ukrainian war, which is uh, regarded as a collision between democracy and autocracy. So um, what kind of, uh, do you think the result of the war in, uh, has an impact uh, on your movement in Asian region or yourself, uh, J uh, JHKD? And, and to the uh, Japanese two guests, um, what kind of phenomena or events in Japan uh, is uh, need need to uh, careful watch? Uh, for example, the event uh, exhibition of unfreedom of expression like that. So, if you have any idea, please tell me. Okay. That's addressed to all of these panelists, is it? Uh, last question goes to two Japanese guests. I see. Okay, so let's do it first. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the questions. Uh, first of all, uh, I I was lived in uh, I was still staying in Hong Kong until uh, last year's October. So well, uh, I think uh, I can uh, much really answer the question on how Hong Kong's living, uh, how Hong Kong ordinary Hong Kong people's living uh, during this time uh, of their uh, oppression. Uh, on the national security law. Um, first of all, uh, as you mentioned, uh, that many of the uh, newspapers outlets, the news outlets were being forced uh, shut down, uh, like Apple Daily, the Stand News, and other small media, more independent media, they were uh, forced uh, to be silent or forced to well sell censorship uh, of their uh, writing or their um, posts, and and thus uh, Hong Kongers. Uh, uh, right now, a lacking of a uh, source of information, uh, which uh, more in, in more neutral way, uh, as we turn on the television, um, the news are always uh, uh, reporting about uh, those uh, pro government uh, propaganda. We we'll say that, uh, like uh, the like uh, well, the presidency's uh, visit to Hong Kong saying a few uh, important words uh, that uh, the Patriots uh, government in Hong Kong is working very well, which uh, we all know it is nonsense. Uh, but uh, we are forced uh, 
uh, to keep silent. And because uh, if we make uh, any of such uh, opinions, uh, not only uh, in public, but uh, also in the private uh, atmosphere, uh, like uh, when you're talking uh, with your friends in a restaurant, if there's uh, some other people uh, sitting right next to you or next, next table to you, hear that, which uh, this guy or uh, these people are pro-government people, they would just uh, make a tip to the government's uh, national security hotline. And then uh, you may get, you may be in, uh, monitored by the government or being caught, get caught uh, because of you are making some sort of, well, uh, anti-government or uh, sedition, uh, sedition speech expressions uh, in the public. Uh, not only in the, in the public area, but also in the online area. Uh, we, we, we've seen uh, many of cases that uh, people in Hong Kong uh, who are only writing uh, uh, some sort of, well, uh, supporting Hong Kong's uh, democracy movements and slogans uh, was being caught uh, by uh, the National Security Police uh, in terms of sedition or uh, spreading out some sort of, well, uh, anti-government uh, information. Uh, so uh, many of us are forced uh, to become silent. Um, it makes uh, many of us very well depressed. I would say that, and and especially uh, in terms of uh, uh, during the uh, COVID situation, during the COVID period uh, last year, uh, Hong Kong's people are not allowed to leave Hong Kong freely. Even they are allowed to leave Hong Kong freely. They need to, uh, when they need to go back to Hong Kong, they need to have a very long period of quarantine. Uh, period. So it makes uh, the freedom of passage, freedom of movement uh, getting very, very difficult. And, um, and on the other hand, uh, not only on, the, on their leaving, uh, but also on their living. Their living, uh, of the, the living standard of Hong Kongers are being uh, oppressed uh, by the, by the well, outnumber of uh, immigrants uh, of China, uh, from China mainland. Uh, in this half year, uh, since the civil COVID uh, policy was uh, relieved by both Hong Kong and Chinese government. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, many of those uh, restaurants or many of those uh, uh, universities are flooded by the mainland Chinese. And this, uh, in fact, is making a quite robust uh, situation that uh, Hong Kong Hong Kongers are not really uh, the, uh, the owner of Hong Kong, but uh, Hong Kong's ownership has already shifted to mainland China. And that's uh, what's uh, revealed uh, in these uh, three years of the national security law. And do you wish to comment on either of the two other questions? One related to the Ukraine, whether that, uh, another one, I think you were saying, what should Japan, people in Japan be watching for uh, with regard to developments in Hong Kong? Or, yeah. I can actually respond uh, well, to both of the questions. I mean, one um, sure, sure. response. Sure. Um, well, there has been uh, well, huge media attention on to things like overseas police stations. And um, those are really sort of um, catchy um, phenomenon indeed. But um, I would say that there is more sort of subtle and also serious um, phenomenon going on in Japan and also in other Asian countries as well, um, which is related to um, the Ukraine, um, well, Russian aggression into uh, of Ukraine. Um, after Russia well, um, went into aggression of Ukraine, um, apparently democratic countries came together to support Ukraine. And um, there appeared um, this discourse that um, you know this is a battle between democracy and autocracy. And this sort of strengthened the idea that democracy is about confrontation. And democracy is about um, state to state um, well, interactions. And democracy could be about also ideology. And this is very serious, I would say because um, democracy is actually about, um, also about value system, which is supported by the people and value system of the people. Um, and um, because this 
um, state-centric um, confrontational sort of image has increased in the country. Um, I perceive that a lot of um, people here, both those progressives and also even younger generation, um, are becoming becoming more skeptical as to why we have to well, try to defend democracy, why we have to um, you know, even talk about democracy. And so um, I think we um, have to think, think that this sort of um, war of narratives is not only launched by those authoritarian countries like China and Russia, but also our own discourse um, well, related to, not necessarily related to um, Hong Kong itself, um, can actually impact on us um, severely. Yes. Uh, I'd like to respond to the uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine first. And uh, uh, there are many influence in many other issues, but the uh, same thing could happen in Asia. That's true. And I attended the democracy forum in Taiwan last year that the democracy is very fragile, it collapsed easily. And I was surprised to hear that many uh, CSO people said, we need weapons. We need weapons to protect democracy. So I think those uh, uh, security issues also democracy is most important. But how could I uh, combine these uh, democracy and uh, security issue? That could happen in the revision of the ODA charter this time in June. June, it was uh, Kevin decided to uh, be died. So. And there's also security issues also in front within the uh, ODA uh, charter. And Minister of Foreign Affairs created new initiatives called OSA, Official Security Assistance, for the first time. And a lot of the Japanese people supported this kind of movement. And cutting a little bit about uh, ODA, which we are against it. So I think I have to admit the role of the military force, physical force, we have to use, it's my personal opinion, <laughs> but uh, uh, try to use the deterrence of US you know, army force. We, what we can do is try to reduce a lot of uh, threat, poverty issues, and uh, democracy, human rights issue in the Asian region. That's our role, we think. But there, this is a very complicated issue. I think that uh, we, we, we need, even civil society, we need to discuss the relationship between the official development system and security issue. Thank you very much. And also, try to not forget the issue of Hong Kong. So that's why this kind of occasion is very useful. From time to time, people can forget. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry, uh, I would like to add a little bit uh, sure, additional uh, information that well. Uh, I, I just mentioned that's a front of a uh, mainlander from China. And uh, investor, it's not only on the population issues, but uh, also on the uh, cultural and economical and the history of Hong Kong. Well, uh, first of all, well, the front of China, I mainland Chinese, uh, which they mainly use is uh, the uh, is the Mandarin instead of the Cantonese, uh, which we also uh, we always use in uh, Hong Kong as a major language, and um, so uh, and on the other hand, the government, the government officials, is increasing their use of Mandarin instead of Cantonese in all of their public speaking. So uh, that is uh, one of the point that the uh, the Hong Kong government is eroding the uh, Hong Kongers' identities, and on the other hand, uh, on the cultural issues and. Uh, uh, the Chinese uh, immigrants is bringing out a massive of their uh, their living habits, uh, like some sort of well uh, regional foods uh, that uh, they may be very uh, favorite, but uh, not that favorite in the, in that Hong Kong, and it is uh, now flooding uh, all the Hong Kong's uh, uh, streets. And uh, on economic issues, uh, we can also see that uh, the Chinese uh, the Chinese tycoon. Uh, which uh, main major is, is state owned, uh, are buying out Hong Kong's properties. Uh, so it makes the uh, dominance of the Hong Kongers uh, possessing on their own uh, properties is decreasing. 
Uh, so that is the uh, major reason of that uh, Hong Kongers are uh, being threatened in, uh, uh, by China. Yeah. Okay. I think you raised your hand. Go ahead, please. Am I allowed to ask two questions? Yes, can you say who you are? Please? I'm Kathleen Benoza from the Japan Times. I have three <laughs> questions for everyone on the yes. panel. So my first question would be in the fight for in the fight against repression from Beijing, what how impa how impactful do you think activism through art and creativity would be? And my second question would be what are the strategies that the Japan Hong Kong Democracy Alliance plan to use in engaging with the local Japanese community? To gain support for your mission. And my third one would be, what can businesses specifically do to help create a more fair society and support democracy in Asia? Thank you. Okay, who would like to go for that? Mr. Yip, would you like to say, did you get the three questions? Or? Yeah, uh, I think this is the, okay. uh, the art and effectiveness of using art. Okay, right? you go yeah. first. Yeah, uh, uh, in terms of the effectiveness of using art as an activist tool, uh, I think that uh, that's very, um, um, people uh, may o always well, omit the well, impact of any expression, type of expressions. Uh, people may uh, always uh, believe that, oh, uh, we will believe what politicians say, but uh, we just omit uh, or uh, we just well, forgot to see uh, the slogan or those expression around us. So uh, using an art as a type of expression uh, is very important to deliver for the message uh, to uh, go globally, and not only to Hong Kongers, but also to the local Japanese, uh, who uh, are always uh, not that focused on uh, the political message. And to deliver or to this message to them and in a form of uh, more sober Soften, soften the message, uh, in not very hard political message that, oh, we want democracy, we want freedom, but uh, try to make them think about of themselves uh, when they are living on this uh, situation that uh, maybe uh, lack of the freedom of speech, you cannot uh, have any free uh, freedom on making expression or making sculpture uh, like uh, the many of those famous artists uh, who originally reside in China but uh, being forced to be exiled uh, outside China, right? And so I think that's a very powerful tool to uh, make Japanese, uh, not only Japanese people, but uh, globally who are not that really into the politics to realize that in fact politics is always uh, working around you. And this sort of, well, us as an activist and we think that it is a new way to uh, let, us, let us to uh, continue our fight uh, 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 away from the repression of China, especially when the PRC, the communist Chinese, are very aware that of a freedom of speech or the power from the art and the power from uh, any sort of expression and may harm their authoritarian uh, governments or regime. Thank you. Would you like to add anything to that? Certainly. Okay, uh, so in terms of to engage the local Japanese uh, to uh, putting more attention uh, to uh, Hong Kong's uh, issue, but not in Hong Kong issue, but the global democratic devotion, uh, which also, also occurred in uh, uh, area like Myanmar and Thailand. And uh, we, are, we are thinking of um, making uh, many, as many as we can along start of, well, uh, as we mentioned about that, the uh, soften, softened uh, message to the Japanese locals. Well, uh, not only uh, organizing art exhibition or art pieces, but also having more of, more and more um, assignments uh, or academic research uh, to uh, have a not, a not single focus, but uh, we make it more diverse. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Any other, any other comments? Uh, you don't have to comment if you don't want to. But, uh, um, I would like to put one question to you, if I may, which is that you know what you've outlined today is very ambitious. It's not just a question of promoting democratic values in Hong Kong. You're talking about promoting democratic values right across Asia, which is a very ambitious plan. So my question really is, how are you going to find, how is the JHKDA going to finance this kind of activity, which presumably is going to cost quite a lot of money? And do you have, where do you, does your main support come from? Do you have the support of governments, of business lobbies, academics? Um, so primarily those two questions. How can you hope to, to finance this, this operation and where will your main support come from or where it's coming from? Steve, you first. Yeah, uh, in terms of the finance, well, uh, it is uh, always uh, very difficult questions uh, for Hong Kong uh, communities, uh, especially. Um, well, uh, as we are uh, very uh, sort of millions in the uh, diaspora communities uh, among Hong Kongers. Um, so, um, of course, it is a very difficult question, but uh, we try to uh, address as many of the, those uh, international funders uh, to fund our uh, projects and our campaigns uh, in, in terms of not only uh, on the arts or artivism, but also on the, uh, on the well, uh, uh, progress on those uh, research projects and also on the advocacy uh, efforts uh, in uh, local Japan and uh, in the Southeast Asia region. So, uh, as uh, as Mr. Wong said, that it is a very uh, costly project, especially when we uh, try to aim at not only uh, moving this as a local Japanese uh, uh, advocacy group, but also as a, a well, usually a regional advocacy group. So. Um, uh, we are still exploring uh, as many uh, support as we can. So, uh, if there's any any uh, parties are interested on financing us, so uh, please raise your hands, and we are very delighted to hear from you. <laughs> okay. Can I can I answer? Yes, yeah, sure. sure. Uh, finance is very important, yeah. and all civil society organizations are suffering from getting enough funds to you know promote uh, some activities and. Especially democracy issue, Japanese foundation is very, is not good at supporting those kind of movement. So I already sent information to the American foundation already this conference, asking if they could support this kind of movement <coughs> or not. So I hope that, that we're going to hear the uh, good answer from the uh, American foundation. This is reality. I, I, I'm very. Um, this is unfortunate that. American Japanese Foundation uh, supporting organization could support this kind of human rights and democracy movement. And also, I'd like to answer a little bit about that, uh, respond to the uh, Japan Times third question, business. I think business it has a great role to support democracy. You know that, have you heard of the business and human rights? This is a, a management of uh, a human rights violation created by the business. No, it's not enough. It's beyond, you have to move forward. As a public entity, you have a responsible for uh, maintaining, supporting democracy, uh, try to solve the structural change, uh, discrimination, fair uh, election kind of thing. So Japanese company tend to be silent. I think European company try to uh, you know, uh, raise your voice. This is not kind of uh, value that the uh, we are doing, so just leave the market. But problem is uh, uh, China is a big uh, market, and Japanese uh, companies are very much afraid of kicked out the market by the uh, Japanese, uh, uh, yeah, Chinese <laughs> government. This is right, but it's gonna be a next movement. Corporation business has a greater role to maintain promote democracy to be a fair society. That's the kind of environment that's good for business also, right? So you have to look step forward to promote democracy. Thank you. Yes, yes, please. Well, uh, going back to the, the question about finance, um, well, that's re indeed a very um, difficult question. But um, I know that um, the Japan-Hong Kong Democracy Alliance has been working very strategically on that. 
Um, for example, a lot of supporters of this um, alliance are actually scholars who are um, studying the field. Um, well, maybe well, um, it's about Hong Kong, it's about uh, democracy, but uh, it could be about China or human rights, or well, what have you. And um, these um, scholars also can bring bring up you know, some um, grant money that they they have um, to um, do some you know. Um, events together, um, study together um, with the members of the um, well, Japan, Hong Kong um, Democracy Alliance. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm um, talking about um, the Asian-wide um, well, democracy support system. Um, there have been actually multiple um, mechanisms um, to support or strengthen the network of support. And um, one of the things um, is what I mentioned, the Sunnyland Initiative which is trying to um, well, work um, together with the Hong Kongers as well as um, other democracy advocates um, well, from Asia. And um, in the case of the Sunny Lines Initiative, um, it has been reaching out, um, well, Wakabe-san talked about um, American foundations, but and that's, that's also uh, something that, uh, well, those actors that we, we've been reaching, reaching out, but they are not the only ones. We've been reaching out to Taiwanese, Australians, um, Indians, Japanese, uh, South Koreans, um, Indonesians, and the Philippines. And um, well, so far, um, well, mostly private foundations um, have been showing some interest, but um, we are still um, in the negotiation uh, phase as to how concretely um, we are going to uh, um, you know, work together. Okay. But specifically, the HK, JHKDA doesn't have any support from governments. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, uh, officially we still do not have any support from the end of the government. Well, my colleague is just um, shaking her head. No, we do have, or don't we? We don't, yeah, we don't have. <laughs> yeah, she, she, yeah, really, <laughs> for the, for the unfortunate <laughs> message. We're really close against time, but uh, is there one more question um, from the floor? Um, I have a very complicated four-part question here, but I, I'm reluctant to read it because it's from an organization and not from an individual. It's from something called Greeters, Photo, Photon Media, but because it doesn't have any uh, identifying name to it, I'm afraid I'm a little reluctant to read it out. But it, it, in any case, it covers a lot of the points you already made. Um, perhaps just the fourth part of it which says, while the Japanese government strategically cooperates with the United States in defending against Chinese aggression towards Taiwan, they have shown a cold response to multiple instances of violations of human rights affecting Japanese citizens or Hong Kong students in recent months. What is the Alliance's comment on this? How do you plan to encourage the Japanese government to take a proactive stance in curbing China's extraterritorial jurisdiction over Hong Kong. I think you've talked about this to some extent, but yep. if you wish to add anything. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I, as uh, Mr. Rowley said, uh, we've already discussed about uh, this uh, on our, well, that uh, speech uh, beforehand, but uh, uh, of course, uh, we need to uh, have more progressive way uh, to uh, push the Japanese government uh, on speaking out for the uh, erosion of the, uh, the democratic uh, situation uh, and the freedom of speech in Hong Kong, especially when it is uh, interfering uh, the sovereignty of Japanese, uh, which the uh, Hong Kong University students case uh, completely occurred uh, in Japan, but not in Hong Kong. But she was uh, being caught in Hong Kong because of uh, what she done in Japan so uh, I'm, uh, I, I think uh, Japanese government can do more to step uh, one step forward and uh, to give you more pressure to uh, Hong Kong government, the central, uh, central government of the PRC to show that uh, Japanese government uh, not here uh, for them to bully. I think that's very important and uh, we'll try as much as we can um, to uh, push the Japanese government to do, is do so uh, in terms of maybe making more of these uh, reports uh, like the UPR report uh, we just uh, made two days ago uh, to the UN, UN uh, which is a, a comprising the, uh, the human rights uh, periodical review that uh, the Japanese government can take part 
uh, in a very official and very uh, a very uh, civilized way uh, that the international order uh, allowed Japan to push forward on these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm <coughs> reluctantly have to close the discussion, I'm afraid. I mean, we could have gone on, I think. Thank you very much, all of you, for presenting this. this um, I think, um, if I may say so, that people who have not experienced repression don't really understand what it's all about. Um, and I think uh, the more you can do to bring home the sort of human side of this, it is an awful thing to, to be um, followed and intimidated. I know I've experienced it myself, but that's, that's not part of what I want to say. Uh, well, again, thank you very much for coming, and I hope you will get coverage in some of the newspapers presented here. Um, and perhaps we can um, host you again on some future occasion. But in the meantime, please join me in thanking you. Thank you very much. Um,